the Long Beach Battalion of the Grenadier Guards arrives for the changing of the guard. Three guards! Halt! General salute, praise and arms. These must be the world's most confused American tourists. In the middle of middle class California, an elaborate marketing operation is underway to convince them that they're really in the heart of elegant upper class England. It's a last desperate bid by the city of Long Beach to convince the tourists and the city fathers that the $63 million they've spent transporting and transforming a pile of British scrap may actually have been worth it. For 10 years, the Queen Mary has hung like a huge, undignified British albatross around the necks of the Long Beach taxpayers. Until now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is May. I'd like to welcome you aboard the ship, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about, a little bit about your tour, and about what you'll be seeing today. Step right on in and down to the end of the walkway there. Last year, nearly a million visitors wallowed briefly in the vicarious yes, elegance of a end. way of life that has passed forever. This is a first class suite. A suite like this consisted of four rooms, starting with a sleeping room that you just came through, your setting room, restroom facilities, and a room in which you could store your luggage. And that was just so you wouldn't have to look at your trunks and your suitcases sitting around the suite everywhere. Already the number of visitors exceeds by four or five times the number of passengers the ship carried in 30 years of plying the Atlantic. The maids' quarters, by the way, cost you an extra $750 round trip. And uh, I know that sounds a little bit expensive, but so was the price of a first-class suite. You see, they started at $5,000 and went all the way up to about $7,500. And so, uh, if you could afford the price of the suite, I'm sure you could afford the price of bringing the maid. In a couple of years, the Queen Mary may finally begin to make money for Long Beach. This year, operating losses are down, visitors are up, thanks to the peculiar talent and obsession of one of America's most extraordinary civil servants, director of the Queen Mary Department, Marvin Wolf. We did it essentially by changing three things. One, the product itself which we consider to be the Queen Mary, the finest ship that was ever built, the most luxurious, most beautiful transatlantic ocean liner that's ever been constructed by man, by taking that and showing it for what it really is, the beautiful lady, by taking that and adding to it a level of entertainment that people expect in a Southern California facility, and third, letting people know about it by marking it aggressively. The Queen Mary today, since its uh, arrival in Long Beach, each year has had more people aboard than it did during its entire lifetime at sea. It has brought more information, more pleasure, and more educational information to the visiting public than anyone ever could have imagined. We have our school children coming down here, not by hundreds and not by thousands, by the tens of thousands on special tours every year. Can They're learning about the ship as a transportation element. They're learning about it as a historical figure. But do you expect a ship to have a crew to go to sea? And here it is, surrounded by a little wall in the middle of Long Beach, California. Well, the only part that you mention that does not take place is going to sea. Except in my dreams, obviously, because I would love to see it go to sea. 
We often term it as a royal experience. A touch of royalty, uh, and not in the sense naturally of being in touch with the royal family, but a different type of royalty. The Queen Mary was known as one of the great queens of the Atlantic. North Atlantic queens have been described over and over again, but in every description by every expert in the fields of things nautical, they've always described the Queen Mary as truly the queen of queens. And I think it's that image of royalty that they come to see, and they come away with a feeling of having experienced something that can only be felt when you're in the presence of royalty. When you walk across the deck and you go through a, an area where perhaps Churchill and Eisenhower and people like that stood and walked, where you can go through the history of a ship that went from the deepest depression during the 30s to a time uh, in the 60s when men were speaking to each other from the earth to the moon. Uh, it, it spans a generation gap and more, and it's a time machine. And many people come here because they want to go back in time. And what they're really looking for is a glimpse, a glimpse of themselves and their forefathers, perhaps. When they come aboard and they stop and they look around and they say, gee, does this thing really float? Will it really move? And how do you do it? However you look at it, the Queen Mary today is a ghost ship. Marvin Wolfe may be making it work because his business is fantasy and the Queen Mary, his dream. You're a bit of a nutter about it, really, aren't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, I have a, an affection for the ship, as do most of us, that is rarely found in anyone working in an office building. 